insurance, making sure that you have life insurance and using that as a tool to protect you and your family for the long term. Right. Um, and so, you know, you often as a as an advisor, um, because I'm insurance licensed as well, you, you always get the question of, um, you know, what type of insurance should I buy? Should I buy term life insurance or should I buy, you know, whole life insurance? And it really the, 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 the answer really becomes like, if you're, let's just say you're married, I'm married so and with four children. So if at the end of the day, does my wife, if I were to go today or tomorrow, does my wife really, does it really matter to my wife whether or not it's term insurance or whether it's whole life insurance? What's going to matter to my wife is how much is coming back in. So like if, in my case, I own $4 million of life insurance. I just want the most amount of money going back to my wife and children as possible. I don't care whether it's whole life or term life at this point. Um, it's the amount of coverage going back into the household. That yeah. makes sense? Yeah, I got it. Now, beyond that, you know, as, as time goes on and you progress in your career, you know, you might want to think about, you know, your allocations to what type of insurance that you own, because one is of a temporary nature, like term insurance, and the other one is of a permanent nature, like whole life or permanent insurance. So at some point, you'll want to evaluate the makeup of what your insurance products look like. What's up, man? I got another good question for you here. Um, life insurance. So... Your job offers you life insurance. Should you take the job life insurance and that be your sole life insurance? Or should you get it on your own? Um, what are your uh, thoughts on that? Uh, another good question, man. I get this question all the time uh, where clients or prospective clients will say, um, I have, you know, life insurance or disability insurance on my job. And I say, that's great. You know, get whatever that they offer you that they're going to pay for for free. But typically, your employer is only going to give you about one to maybe two times your salary in the amount of life insurance that you need. And then on the disability side of things, they're going to cap how much you're able to qualify for on an individual level. But in terms of life insurance, I always pose this question. I say, would you rather be in a position where if you left your job uh, and you had all your benefits with your job and didn't have any outside of your job, would you rather be in a position where if you left your job that they can con they control all your benefits? So if you leave, you don't have any more benefits or would you rather be in a position where you independently own and control your own benefits outside what they give you on your job? And typically, you know, I pose that question to you. How would you, what position would you like to be in? So, as you know, you know what I mean, we go way back where I've been in a situation where my job got bought out and I had to, and they let me go. So, because of that, I lost all health benefits, life insurance benefits. So, like, going forward, something like that is always in the forefront of my mind of, like, how can I, like we talked about your five principles, protect myself. Mm -hmm. So, it would be great to have my own personal life insurance even if the job offers it. The job one is just extra thank you, kudos, but I got my own that's going to stick with me thick and thin, whatever whatever the case may be. That's right. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what most clients say once it's break, broken down to them in a way that they can, you know, digest it and say and think about it and say, yeah, you know what? It would make sense for me to control my own benefits. And so that's when they, you know, take the initiative and say, let me at least put in an application and see, you know, what type of rating I get from the insurance company. Uh, and then, you know, they can make a decision on how they want to move forward after, you know, the underwriting process has been complete, et cetera. That's good. That's good. So basically get your life insurance outside of your job because your job is never, like in my case, never permanent, never something that you can count on 120 years from now. Like your job changes, you change. But it, when you got your own independent life insurance, it goes with you from wherever you go. 
Right. Just, and you know, just said a different way, be in control of your own benefits. You always want to be in control. You don't want to be at the, the, at the mercy of a company so that if they pull the rug from under you or you decide to, you know, get, shoot them the peace sign and say, hey, I'm out of here. Like you don't have to separate, you know, with the benefits. You always, if you're always in control, you will manage um, what happens with your benefits rather than uh, a corporation. Man, that's some great advice. That's some great advice right there. No problem, man. I got you. So basically, with the life insurance, at this point, um, you want to make sure that it's covered, that if something happens to you, she's going to be good for a long term period. You, her and the four kids. Congrats on having four kids. Thanks, man. It's a, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, but it, like what I say when it comes to, um, y- you know, when I'm having this discussion with clients, um, I often say that um, um, I, I lost my train of thought here, Barty. Sorry about that. But uh, I just often explain to them, man, you know, while you're young and healthy, get as much term insurance as you can possibly afford because you don't know what today or tomorrow holds in terms of your health. And as you, as most people know, when you apply for insurance it's based on your, your age and your health characteristics, as well as your family health characteristics. But you can't, obviously you can't control your family's health characteristics, but you are in complete control of the first two, right? Your age, the age at which you get it and your health, at the time that you get it. I mean, obviously you got to take care of yourself and all that. And then, yeah. you know, that's a given. But if you're young and you're healthy, get it, get as much term insurance as you possibly can while you're young. So that way, and make sure you get it with a great, with a strong, strong insurance company. An A-rated company in the insurance world or financial services world is not a great company. If you think about a grading scale, right? We got A plus, we got A, and then we got B plus and B minus, right? Yeah. So in the financial world, you you have uh, companies have ratings. You got basically triple A, double A, and A. So if I were telling you, Bartu, hey, you, I'm going to put you with an A-rated company based on what I just told you of triple insurance companies got have ratings of triple A, double A, and A, what would you think about an A-rated company? That's a no-go. Right. Triple A. You want to be with the best company that you can possibly be with because that says a couple of things about the insurance company. It says that that company, the triple A company, uh, has a, a less likelihood of becoming insolvent or not being able to, they have a less likely chance of uh, not being able to pay their, their death claims or what have you. And more importantly, they're just a stronger company versus the A-rated company. That makes sense? Yeah. And furthermore, the AAA rated company is gonna have characteristics about how they manage their expenses when it comes to claims and claims experiences and all that stuff as it relates to clients. Uh, or policyholders that's going to give them better results over the long haul in terms of how they manage, you know, their their investments and all that stuff. But furthermore, give the client or the customer better options should the client choose to switch from a term insurance policy over to a whole life insurance policy. That your options as a consumer is going to be more favorable for you than an A-rated company. That makes sense. Yeah, I got 